Good morning, Second Baptist. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Therefore, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, can we give the Lord a hand praise one good time? I greet each of you in the name and faith of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith, the giver of every good and perfect gift. For I heard the Apostle Paul declare that it is in him in which we live, we move, and we have our being. I would personally like to welcome everyone gathered here today in person, as well as those of you who are viewing online. I extend a very special greeting this morning to David and Dawn Cole, as well as Sister Paula Portis, all tuning in from the Lone Star State of Texas. Amen. And I would also like to say a very special hello to Sisters Willa Mae Walker, Johnny Farrell, and Virginia Page, all tuning in and around within the Chicagoland area. Come on, can we give them a hand as well? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. And if I've missed anyone, please do me a favor. Why don't you check in on Facebook and let us know where you're joining us from. Listen, our sole purpose for gathering here today is to worship and to praise our awesome God. And listen, we invite everyone joining us online and in person to help us praise our God up in here. Amen. Amen. Our wonderful deacons are now coming to lead us in devotion. Let's receive them at this time. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Second Baptist. Today's scripture, stand if you are able to stand. Today's scripture is coming from Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses 8 and 9. New Living Translation, Philippians, fourth chapter, verses 8 and 9. Shout amen when you have it. And it reads as follows. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from me, everything you've heard from me, and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. I woke up this morning with my mind staying on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind staying on Jesus. Woke up this morning with my mind, you know, stand on Jesus, hallelujah, 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 no harm to mind, stand on Jesus, ain't no talking with my mind, stay Mind. You know, stand on Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Stay on Jesus, you know how to keep your mind. downturn, we still praise you. We still love you because you first loved us and because you take care of us. We thank you for waking us up. We thank you for allowing us to come to the church house. We thank you for our church family, Lord, without whom, you know, not sure what we would do. We thank you for our pastor. You know, we thank you for our family and friends. And we thank you for all the things that you do. Lord, I humbly pray that 
the word that's given today will uplift us, keep us in line, keep us safe, and keep us in your word. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. <clears throat> I did not come to tell you something that you do not know, but rather to remind you of something that you must never forget. These are my pastoral observations for Sunday, October the 25th, 2020. Bible study is every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Say amen, somebody. Amen. amen. We are finally in the book of Colossians. And we're having a wonderful time. Why don't you just tune in and join us? Amen. Please, please, please continue to practice social distancing and the wearing of face coverings. If you feel sick or if you have knowingly been exposed to someone who is sick, please stay at home. Also, following the benediction, I'd like to remind everyone that you don't have to leave, but you got to. You got to get up out of here in a safe and expeditious manner. Amen. Amen. And, and I want to remind you, please do not stop to gather in holy huddles and to gather at the doorway and on the sidewalk, even in the parking lot. We, 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 I heard that uh, it took a long time for people to leave out, to exit out of the parking lot. And that, that's a concern of mine, and, and, and we have to be very serious regarding this issue because we see the spike in numbers, and we want to ensure that we are being as safe as possible as we try to avoid uh, being part of the problem and being part of the solution. So uh, it's my job to continue to look at ways to make sure that happens. All I can do is encourage you to do so, but if we are not doing that, I'm in contact with the leadership and perhaps we're considering having people in the parking lot and on the sidewalks to move you along to your cars. And, and if we have to do it, we will, because anything that happens at this church is my responsibility. And so I want to do everything that I can to make sure that you're safe. Amen. 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 Diane and I would, would like to personally thank each and every one of you who who had the opportunity to join us in person as well as online on last week on the celebration of my installation as your new pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you. We, we, we thank you for every gift, every card, every word of encouragement, and every prayer. My family and I, we were so pleased. Everything was fantastic, so God bless you all. It is the fourth Sunday, therefore this is the day that we have set aside to honor our octogenarians. Amen. Those of us who are blessed to have seen 80 years or more. Amen. Come on, give them a hand. Amen. So I have cards for Sister Flora Wright. Is she here? Flora, Flora. And Sister Dorothy Thatcher. Amen. So... If they're not here, we'll be sending those through the United States Postal Mail. <laughs> Amen. That's the benefit of being pastor. I, got to, I get to give my people some, some work. So, amen. Amen. It's also the time that we set aside to celebrate our marriage ministry. And so I want to celebrate Isaac and I guess we'll start from the bottom. Anthony and Judith Williams, 16 years. Are they here? Come on, let's come on, let's give them a hand, hand praise. It's only a few of them. Kenyatta and Gina Goyton, 17 years. Dwayne and May Carpenter, 23 years. Calvin and Hattie Mae Holloway, 23 years. I just threw May in there after Hattie. I just always, I ain't never met a Hattie who wasn't a Hattie May, amen. I, if that ain't her name, y'all just, I apologize. <laughs> amen. Cedric and Karen Nellums, 26 years, amen. Darren and Su Susie Gaddis, 37 years, amen. 
Frank and Linda Barber, 41 years. Amen. Mitch and Janie McCutcheon, 46 years. And Isaac and Betty Clark, 54 years. Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing. Boy, this is a whole bunch of our leadership right in this month of marriage, October. This is a good month. Amen, amen, amen. You, you're going to hear me say it so many times, and I want to repeat it, that we become what we celebrate. I said we become what we celebrate, and we should always celebrate marriage so somebody can come and say, Red, I'm, I'm getting ready to hop the broom. If we celebrate marriage long enough, people are going to start getting married even more. Amen. And I believe if we continue to celebrate the fact that our octogenarians have, have lived 80 years, I believe that God will bless us to eventually reach that mark. We know that the Bible says that our years are 70, three, uh, three score and 10, but then he adds 10 more, hallelujah, if you got the strength. And so we thank God for each and every one of them. Just a reminder, the new SBC website is now up and running, so be sure to check it out. It looks awesome. Clap your hands if you've been on the new website. Amen. I think they've done an unbelievable job. Also, our Frontiers Ministry, amen, our Frontiers Ministry is continuing to mentor and to mold the minds of our young men. And even in the midst of this pandemic, they are still continuing the great work in that ministry. So I want to just encourage you to be on the lookout. We got a great announcement coming up in the not too distant future. And so be prepared to continue to send your young men who fall into that age category. I think it's, what is it, uh, Reverend Furge, 13 to 18? 13 to 25, you got a young man. I've heard some people say, man, we need to do something for these young men. And so we're moving forward with that ministry. And so be on the lookout. We got some great announcements coming up. If there are any visitors here today, we ask that you stand right now at this time and be recognized. Any visitors, any visitors at this time? Amen. Amen. Well, if you're visiting us online for the first time, we want to say welcome. And we pray that you'll come again at your earliest convenience. Also, let's remember to vote on Tuesday, November 3rd. Come on. Come on. Clap your hands if you're ready. Amen. I'm ready. I sent my ballot in. I still might pass by. I walked by just to look. Amen. We are now nine days away. Amen. From Pink Slip 2020. You'll catch that on the way down Summit. When you've been naughty. When you can't play well with others, when you break the rules, the landlord say you can't stay here no more. It's time to go. Amen. Amen. Let's not just talk about it. Let's be about it. Get out and vote. Come on, clap your hands one good time. Please continue to pray for the sick and shut in. And I invite each of you to join us in our weekly prayer line every Saturday morning from 8 a.m to 9 a.m. Let us now prepare our minds and hearts as we receive the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Amen. Paul said, let every man as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, how thankful we are once again for your goodness and your mercy towards each of us, O God. We thank you for traveling grace and arriving mercy to this appointed place at this appointed time. And now, God, as we continue on in worship, Father God, we ask that you right now give us the wisdom to be able to worship in giving, God, that we might consecrate what we have and what you've given us to give back a portion to you, O oh God. So we ask now that you would just bless our offering, receive it, and then press it down, shake it together, allow it to run over that it might benefit this ministry some 5, 10, and 100 fold. These and other blessings we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's now receive our music ministry as they come in their own special way. Say amen as they come.
Even though your wind blows, I want you to know you cause me no long cause I'm safe in his arms even though your rain falls I can still make this call let there be peace now I can say go Because of faith, I have a brand new day. The sun will shine, and I, 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 I'm going to be okay. Yes, yes, that's what I told you.
My trouble, your trouble, our trouble, it won't last. It can't last. It won't last. No, 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 no. That's what I told my soul. That's what I told my soul. That's what I told my soul. That's what I told my God said, He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. No matter what I go through, He's right. protects me, he loves me, his peace, his joy, it rains, and that's, that's what I told my soul, that's what I told my soul, that's what I God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us thus far on the way, Thou who has by Thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. Master, thank you now for this another preaching privilege. Pray now for power from on high to proclaim Your holy word. That till that end, O oh God, when it's all said and done, and we depart from this place. We pray that by the power of your preached word, our situations might be confronted, our spirits might be convicted, sinners might be converted, but then lastly, in times like these, our souls might be comforted. So forgive us of our sin, fix us for this worship experience, fill us with your spirit, O oh God, then feed us until we want no more. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise if you don't mind. What a wonderful Savior. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let's all stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. In the fourth chapter of the epistle to the church at Philippi, commencing at the eighth verse, you will find these words recorded as translated in the New Living Translation. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Have your seats in the presence of the most high God. But just a little while for the time that is mine, I'll preach and teach with this thought in mind. Keeping your mind stayed on Jesus. Amen. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. We've now come to the fourth and final sermon in this series of Philippian favorites. We began our time together as pastor and church by moving forward by faith. Amen. Then we followed that with a word about overcoming our anxiety. Last week, we talked about how even in the midst of a pandemic, God keeps on making a way. He makes a way for his people even in times of lack. 
And now as we close out this series, I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about how to keep your mind stayed on Jesus. My brothers and sisters, it's been suggested that nearly 70,000 thoughts pass through our minds on a daily basis. Good thoughts, bad thoughts, happy thoughts, sad thoughts, clean thoughts. Can I say dirty thoughts? Stinking thinking. Positive thoughts, negative thoughts. If we were honest this morning, we would admit that we all spend too much time thinking about the wrong things. Have I got anybody who wants to stay in church this morning? Amen. And, and, and this pandemic has not helped us one bit because of the mandate to isolate and to shelter in place we have in many cases been left to our own thoughts. Some of us have been able to think now more than ever before. I know your mind's on your money and your money's on your mind. But as we seek to be made more and more into the conformity of the Christ, it is imperative that each of us brings our thought life under his lordship by learning to think biblically about every aspect of our lives. One of the things that is helpful for each of us this morning is to be aware that all sin begins in our thoughts. The computer programmer rightly stated garbage in. Y'all gonna help me preach this morning. The wise man said it like this, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he or she. And James followed that up by saying each person is tempted when they are dragged away. The devil like to get you isolated, get you cut off from your help, get you cut off from your prayer partners, get you cut off from your wife, cut off from your husband cut off from your friends and then James says by their own evil desire they are enticed then here comes the summary of the text after desire has conceived that's in your mind it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown gives birth to death therefore beloved if we want to win the battle over sin. On the thought level, it is imperative that we keep our minds stayed on Jesus. Preach, boy. I think you're doing all right. And it is my prayer that upon the conclusion of this sermon, you'll be equipped with the tools necessary to keep your eyes fixed on the Father and your mind focused on the Master. My brothers and sisters, if we're going to keep our minds stayed on Jesus, then we must first of all focus on biblical truth. That's what I said. I said we've got to focus on biblical truth. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The King James Version renders in, verse, in chapter 4, verse 8, finally, brethren. Now, now, Paul had to have been a good old Baptist preacher. Now, somebody say, how could you possibly know that? <laughs> because this is now his second close. <laughs> because back in chapter 3, verse 1, you recall Paul said, finally, my brethren. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Somebody going to catch that. <laughs> he said, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. And now he says again in chapter 4, verse 8, finally, brethren. This is his second close. Hallelujah, yes. He, he, he then proceeds to give a laundry list of things that we should think on. Things that 
We should meditate on things that we should chew on and things that we should ponder. For you do know that what we ponder is what we will eventually practice. And what we practice is what we will eventually produce. And so the question on the floor this morning becomes, what are we producing from our thought life? When, when Paul says, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, there be any praise, think on these things. What he's actually talking about is the very word of God. And that's why in this case, the NLT is spot on. Thank you, Nathaniel. For it reads this way. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. What he's literally saying is you can wrap, this is just really, it's a lot of things he mentioned, but he's really talking about one particular thing. The very word of God. The one thing that we need to combat the enemy. The one thing that we need to keep our hearts pure. The one thing that we need to keep our minds stayed on Jesus is the very word of God. My brothers and sisters, we must focus on biblical truth. Think on, yeah, these things. The psalmist said it this way. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth, watch this, his fruit in his season. Talk, boy. That every person has their own fruit, and it's coming in his or her own season. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. But not only if you want to keep your mind stayed on Jesus, must you focus on biblical truth. Secondly, as I hurry on, we must also follow our godly examples. You, 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 you want to follow somebody who's living the life or at least sincerely making an attempt to live the life. Paul says in verse 9, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. Do. That word is given in the imperative in the Greek. It is a command. Do those things. We live in a day and age where good role models are difficult to find. No, no sooner than we lift a person up, the world is there to tear her down. Have I got a witness? We, we are hard on people today. We're, we're so hard on people today that most individuals in the spotlight choose not to be looked up to for fear of being put on a pedestal only to come crashing back down to earth. But the truth of the matter is that we need good role models. Have I got a witness? We need godly examples. And Paul here is not saying that he is the standard by which all believers will be measured. Paul is not saying that the pastor is the standard by which all believers are to be measured. And you need to know this morning, sanctified as you are, you are not the standard by which all believers will be measured. Paul had previously encouraged the Corinthians to follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Thank God, my brothers and sisters, for godly examples. When God saves us, he will always send a few people that will come alongside you 
to encourage you. He'll send somebody right on your job. Have I got a witness? You, you ain't got nothing but a staff of three people, and one of them might be a Christian that loved the Lord, and they'll come right alongside you out of nowhere to encourage your heart. He'll have a neighbor move in right beside you in the middle of nowhere and say, I just wanted to have somebody to pray with. Can I pray with you every now and then? God will always send someone to be a godly example to encourage your heart. When I think about godly examples, I think about people like Sidney and Calvin Giddens. When I was an intern here a few years ago, they would always ask me how they could pray for me. <laughs> Lord, have mercy here. I always appreciated that. Calvin would get all the way up into my face. Pre-COVID, hallelujah. And, uh, and quietly, calmly speak a word of encouragement to me. I always appreciated that. That's the kind of example that I would like to follow. I thank God this morning for godly examples. Paul said, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. The Message Bible frames it this way. Put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and watch this, realized. Lord, have mercy here. God, God will bring you to a holy realization of some things. You, you, you'll come to know him a little better by watching him move in the lives of other saints and believers. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And then he says, do that in God. Hallelujah. Who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent harmonies. If we're going to keep our minds stayed on Jesus, we're going to have to focus on biblical truth. Secondly, we're going to have to follow our godly examples. But lastly, and then I'll leave you alone. At the moment of testing, you're going to have to finish with definitive action. Paul says in verse 9, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. He adds this action verb, do. In Paul's writings, he would always give knowledge first and then follow it with a life application. I said knowledge first. Then the life application. That's proper teaching. Give the knowledge first and then show them how to apply it to their lives. A classic example of this Pauline practice is found in the book of Romans. In chapters 1 through 11, Paul teaches the Romans what to believe. He talks about the sinfulness of humanity. He teaches them about the forgiveness of sin through Christ Jesus and the freedom from sin's grasp. And then lastly, he talks about his love for the nation of Israel. And ultimately, God's love and mercy for Israel, as well as his love and mercy for each of us. Have I got a witness? He begins chapter 10 with the beautiful words, listen, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God. For Israel is that they might be saved. Hallelujah. And beloved, Paul's desire ought to be our desire. Our heart's desire and prayer for our neighbors, for our friends, for our co-workers, for our family, for the president, is that he might. Y'all backed up on me right there. He might 
be saved. The blood reaches the highest mountain. And then, hallelujah, it flows to the lowest valley. That's why the blood, that's where the blood found me, Randy. I was way down at the bottom. But thank God the blood kept on flowing. Hallelujah. To the Lamb. To the Lamb of God. Yeah. Knowledge first. And then the life application. So after Paul finishes giving the Romans all of this doctrine, all uh, of this knowledge, and all of this teaching, he then follows it up with a life application. He begins chapter 12 with the word, therefore. This is a summary word. What he's saying is, based on everything that I've just previously said from chapters 1 to 11, now I'm about to give you a life application. In other words, after all of that, this is what I really want to tell you. He says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This, Paul says, is your true and proper worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul says it does not matter how much Bible you know. Does not matter how many lessons you've taught. It does not matter how much you may know or dare I say think you know. Paul says, can you lay aside your desires? Can you deny yourself? Can you offer yourself to God as a living sacrifice? We used to sing, oh, Lord, prepare me. I wish I had some real church folk in here. To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And watch this with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. See, beloved, when it's all said and done, we must finish with definitive action. What good is it to focus on biblical truth and then to have godly examples only to arrive at the time of testing and to punk out? <laughs> oh, I can't make it. You've got to follow through and finish with Definitive action. Paul says those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, the imperative, do it. Beloved, what we know must be connected to what we do. Our doctrine must be connected to our duty. Our talk should be connected to our walk. And our learning should be connected to our living. And that's why our mission here at Second Baptist is to live and to learn God's word together. Hallelujah. Beloved, when we focus on biblical truth, when we follow our godly example, and when we finish with definitive action, Paul says, the God of peace shall be with you. A few weeks ago, when we talked about overcoming our anxiety, at that time we looked at chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, when Paul concluded that the peace of God, <laughs> somebody missed that thing right there, which surpasseth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. He had said at that time, the peace of God. And now, today, he says, the God of peace. <laughs> Somebody missed it again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Paul has shifted from the peace of God 
to the God of peace. And what Paul wants us to remember is, is that the same God that possesses peace is the same God that provides it. Have I got a witness? Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because he trusteth in thee. Jesus said, I told you all this so that you may have peace. Here on earth, you will have many trials and uh, many sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. Beloved, real peace comes from knowing that we worship a real God who has given us a real Savior to deal with our real problems. Real peace reminds us that despite our circumstances, Despite our outcome, despite the test results, despite the election results, that God is in control. And because of Jesus, our citizenship is certain. Our destiny is decisive and our victory is secure. I'm dying, oh Lord. I've heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer, drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer. Nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Give the Lord a hand of praise if you don't mind. <laughs> Father God, we thank you today. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he came from heaven down to earth to show us the way from the earth to the cross our debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky and Lord in times of trouble we, we continue to lift your name we lift your name on high God we pray that as we wage the war in our minds that as we keep our minds stayed on your son, Jesus Christ, and what he has accomplished on our behalf, that we would win one battle at a time, one day at a time. Strengthen us for the journey, oh God. And we'll be careful to give your name praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
amen, amen. Maybe someone in our midst, in person or online, maybe after hearing that word, has decided to follow Jesus. Perhaps they are ready to give their life and to allow Jesus Christ to be the Lord of their life. The Bible teaches us that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible declares that you are in fact saved. Despite the fact of being dipped in the baptism, despite the fact of whether or not you've given the right hand of fellowship to the preacher, the Bible declares that from your house, from your couch, even today, salvation can be yours. Eternal life can be yours. A relationship with God can be yours. Is that you? Is that you today? Man, woman, boy, or girl, letter, Christian experience, candidate for baptism. Christ can be yours. We see that none have come. But until Christ return, we thank God that there's still room. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise. Everyone standing, everyone standing, every person standing, resting on their feet. We offer a word of prayer as we prepare to give the benediction. Our Lord and our God, we come right where we are in the precious name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the preached word today. We thank you for what our hearts have felt. We thank you for what our ears have heard. God, we pray right now that something would swell up in us, oh God, that would give us the power and the encouragement to take captive of every evil thought and make it obedient to your son, Jesus Christ, oh God. We thank you for the fact that you've left your inspired word to encourage us. We thank you for the godly examples that you've placed in our lives. But then, God, we ask that at the time of testing, whether it's later on today, next week, but when the time comes, that we would have the power to do what you've told us to do. God, we thank you today. We thank you for every individual to my left and to our right. We thank you for every husband, for every wife, for every boy and for every girl, for every friend, every brother, every sister. God, strengthen us even now for the journey. God, there's some people struggling with one thing and some struggling with another. But by the power that worketh in us, oh God, allow us to overcome as you told us that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Bless us now as we prepare to depart from this sacred space. Give us traveling grace and arriving mercy to our appointed destinations. And then, oh God, if it be your holy will, allow us to safely gather together again when it is possible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and ever. And all God's people said, amen. 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 And amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand and praise. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us online. See you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. God bless you. God bless you, Second Baptist. I love you. God bless you. You are now in the hands of the ushers.